Hey guys, what's up? Back with another video. Last week we dealt with time management and the week before that we dealt with group projects. Group projects. Yeah, so, I mean, today was an interesting day. You know when a teacher loves you, when a teacher loves you, you don't just get failed at the end of the term if you're doing crap. Not saying that I would get failed at the end of the term for doing crap, but I mean, when a teacher loves you, you are going to get a ton of crap. You're literally gonna get, you're gonna get shot at, you're gonna get fired at. So that when you leave, you know, your establishment, your place of education, you're not going to get fired. Truth is, you know, your last day of school is all about being professional. And I guess being professional means that you need to know all of the nomlin. Oh boy, this is a tongue twister. Being a, being a professional means that you need to know all of the nomlin. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. You know, all of the, 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 the wording that goes with your craft. So let's talk about presentations in terms of being specific. That would be the number one thing. Be specific. You're presenting on a particular topic. What is your topic about? How did you arrive at this? What are your sources? Eye contact. Many times you'd see me, I'm not really accustomed to being in front of the camera. I'm accustomed to being behind the camera. And I don't maintain eye contact at all. I'm doing it right now, probably because the camera is a little better, but trust me, eye contact is not my thing. But you have to do it. It commands your audience or whoever is listening to you and it gives you a certain amount of presence. Now, basically when you um, when you present them, you, you have probably just a few seconds to win over your audience. So the video that you're actually watching now is probably very boring, but the way that I edit it, is gonna keep your intent, your attention, right? You're not gonna be seeing all the pauses and all the little, you know, boring aspects of the video because I, I edit it. But what about when you're presenting? When you're presenting, you actually don't have that luxury. So you have to be dynamic, you have to be excited, and you have to show enthusiasm, but you have to have your research. Remember, we we're talking about, you know, most of the cases, most of the stuff that you'll be doing in school will be research based in any case. Well, guess what? You have research to do. So, I think that is what I should actually be talking about today because that was the most pertinent topic of today. Research. Reason being, let's say you're a designer. You have lights, sound, scenery, costume, and this applies to those of you who are in film as well, right? How do you go about doing research? Basically, you have background research and conceptual research. With your background research, you would simply, you go to the library, you go on the internet, you read books, articles. But then what about conceptual research? Conceptual research is the ideas that come about based on what you are inspired by. And when you're presenting as a designer, your conceptual research and your background research, they're very important or they're critically important. Sometimes people may actually do funny thing you know in a classroom while you're presenting and it may affect you but don't let it affect you don't let it people may say things don't worry about you go in there and you kill it when you go in there you have to be confident take a deep breath get in your zone it's like if you're going on stage and you're going to act or you're going to sing for those of you who are performing trust me life couldn't be better when you finish presenting a project and you presented the hell out of the project but in despite of how nervous you were you know that you had your research to back you up you know that you had your conceptual research and your background research. So that's one. Two, how about being on time? You know, that's a common trait that we as Trinidadians do really uh, always have in time. But I say to you now, be on time, be dynamic, look professional, dress. As you can see, I'm currently wearing a jacket. But the thing about it is, I mean, there are more than one ways to look professional. You don't necessarily have to wear a jacket. I wear a jacket usually because in this freezer that I'm in, I, I, I yeah, I said it, freezer, I am usually very cold. So wear a jacket. So let's talk about the things that we've dealt with thus far. Talk about conceptual research research, background research, talk about being on time. Let's talk about being in the right team. When you're in the right team, you feel inspired and challenged to do what is basically better than what you think your potential is. Having the right team members is an absolute treasure. Having people that will challenge your status quo and the way that you operate is one of the greatest luxuries you could ever have. Also, there are things that you could do to better yourself. And I mean, I can't begin to describe how necessary it is to be in a team of people that can challenge you, that can make you competitive. And competition is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's when it gets out of hand or you know goes to a major overkill, then things could be a little bit corny. But for the most part, if it is you are a person that excels at your craft and you are able to, to be around people who take you to another level, that's where you wanna be, you're in the right place. And you're allowed to keep on growing. Right now, I'm currently working on a paper. The paper is about traditional Indian way, and I have to do citations. 
and it's for a subject called period style costume and mask you know it's one of the last courses that we get to do we as being theatrical design and production students people who do lights and sound we have to do this thing called period style and we must know all of the period unfortunately fortunately because I mean if you don't know the period styles how are you gonna be able to do let's you guessed it background research and conceptual research I guess research is it you know but yeah and period style knowing your period styles is very important if you're a designer you know because you may be working on a stage play you may be working on a film and these things may be dealing with historical evidence that is needed as a result what you can do is, is background research for period you'd want to re research the clothing culture of the time the architecture you'd even want to re research the type of food that they ate at the time there are many things that you can do so until next time it's Ronald George signing out <laughs> And it shows that confidence. So, yeah, it probably sucks. But I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get there sometime. This is the longest I've spoken on camera in a while. These things called bloopers, they're gonna keep coming. I'm sorry to be boring, guys. I really am. I didn't mean to be so boring. Oh, if you're wondering what camera I'm shooting this on, this is a Canon 70D. One of the most underrated Canon cameras of all time. So much so that the person who has it in their possession currently didn't even really realize how good it was until they started using it. I'm not sure what's gonna be happening with this video, but so, you know, this video is going so boring right now. Chances are this video may not get posted, but, you know, oh my God, this video is so all over the place. So I skipped one topic and then skip back to the other. So, I mean, life goes on.